By the time Daryl Little D. Reed was 18 years old, he had saved nearly a million dollars from moving weight and was known as the crack king of Oakland, quickly becoming one of the most powerful drug dealers in the Bay Area. As a kid growing up in the 80s, Little D had watched his close friend and Oakland drug kingpin, Felix the Cat Mitchell, make the drug game look glamorous, spending money and driving fancy European cars. After Felix Mitchell's arrest in 1985, Little D inherited the drug empire, becoming the new kingpin of Oakland, living lavishly and surrounding himself with celebrities. But after just two years at the top of the game, Lil D was arrested and charged in federal court with possession of 14 kilograms of crack cocaine. He was 20 years old when he was arrested and was later sentenced to 35 years in prison. But 26 years later, he was released after being pardoned by Barack Obama. Lil D now spends his time speaking to the youth about not making the same mistakes as he did, saying, I'm going to take the negative about my journey and turn it into a positive. Michael Harry O'Harris started selling drugs on the east side of Los Angeles in the mid-1980s, conquering the LA market and then expanding to the entire country. Working with his younger brother, the two connected with Colombian suppliers and became one of the biggest drug dealers in the United States, regularly sending pounds of cocaine to Texas, Louisiana, and Chicago, making him a multi-millionaire by the age of 26. Hario later tried to get out of the game and go legit by investing in legitimate business ventures and becoming one of the first black men to put on a Broadway play that featured Denzel Washington. But he was eventually arrested and convicted of kidnapping, attempted murder, and narcotics trafficking, serving 31 years in prison before being released in 2019. Prior to his release, Hario told the Daily Mail that he hopes to take his wisdom back to the streets so he can share what he's learned and help heal broken communities, saying, I know that from the moment I'm free, I will work tirelessly to help change lives. Felix the Cat Mitchell created one of the biggest criminal organizations in Oakland's history. As the leader of a heroin empire, Mitchell was Oakland, California's first large-scale drug kingpin. It's estimated that before he turned 21 years old, Mitchell was earning $400,000 to $1 million every month in drug-related income. He drove a Rolls Royce and spent millions on cars and clothes and also donated large amounts of money to charities. But in 1985, Felix Mitchell was arrested and convicted of numerous drug and tax evasion charges and sentenced to life in prison. A year later, just days before his 32nd birthday, Mitchell was stabbed to death by a fellow inmate at California's Leavenworth State Penitentiary. In the 1980s, Brian Waterhead Bo Bennett was one of the first black drug dealers in the streets to deal directly with the Colombian supplier. After partnering with the Colombians, he quickly built a cocaine empire that moved over a ton of cocaine a week, the largest cocaine distributorship in the country at the time, pulling in up to $4 million a month. Waterhead Bo flaunted his success and could be seen all over Los Angeles flashing large amounts of money and driving his convertible Mercedes Benz or his Corvette. Waterhead Bo was caught after state troopers in Missouri found over a thousand pounds of cocaine in a vehicle and seized a cell phone that was later traced back to his address. In 1990, at the age of 25, Waterhead Bo was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Former crack kingpin Freeway Ricky Ross is not only the biggest drug dealer from California, he's also the most well-known. Rick Ross was the king of the LA Coke game in the 1980s. He maintained a drug empire worth hundreds of millions on the streets of South Central. It's estimated that on a busy day, Ross could bring in over $2 million in a single 24-hour period. He did this by securing a steady cocaine supply from Nicaragua and becoming one of the first big-time drug dealers to cook cocaine into crack. Ross then exported several tons of cocaine to New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and other parts of the U.S., making more than $900 million in the process. Today, Freeway Ricky Ross is an author, actor, and prison reform activist. Having spent a combined 19 years in prison for two separate arrests, he now says he is out of the drug business for good. When asked about his time as a drug dealer, he says, If I could change my life, I would have never sold drugs, knowing what I know today.